football game is brought to you by Willow's Huckland, the original and best huckleberry business in Hungry Horse. Dad first started us as the Willow's Honeyberry Farm and employed hundreds of Columbia Falls High students. Then after 33 years, he made a playhouse in college and the bank got the business. But son James started with the same tried, true, proven recipes in his old trailer. And though they got the business, they never got the recipes. So we've got the original recipes. And as you can see, we always win in all the contests because we got the good stuff. The really fun place to stop. Voted the best in all the significant categories that deal with Huckleberry products. We got first place in the milkshake category. First place in the Huckleberry Jam category, and second place in the USA Today National Huckleberry Pie Contest. This is where the very popular Incredible Bigfoot documentary was made. Wide variety of all kinds of gift items. Really great shirts. Look at that, 1995 berry products that are made right back there in that pot. Home handmade, great big showroom all kinds of souvenir items. Hey everybody, this is James Willows with the first round of the playoffs from Columbia Falls, Montana with the number five ranked Bulldogs pitted against the number four ranked Columbia Falls Wildcats that have, have a great quarterback, Cody Schweiker, a big guy committed to the Grizz. He goes both ways and he's quite a force and he's hard to stop. So let's see if the Bulldogs can stop him tonight. And I myself am a graduate of Columbia Falls, but I also attended Whitefish High. And I was even a Whitefish Bulldog in the Cat Dog Smoker, which is a boxing match that they have. And Whitefish kicks off to Columbia Falls. Ball goes to about the 10. He's headed upfield to about the 20. Swanker will take control here at the 20 yard line. That'll be a run, not much there. Second, <clears throat> Second and 10, not much on that. Swanker will keep it for a good gain up the middle for about five. We've got a big third and a four and a half. Swanker will take it himself. He's a big package and he barrels forward for the first down. Schweiker himself is probably the biggest back in the backfield, so he often just keeps it when push comes to shove. Nice little hitch route to the left. He's got a little space for about three. Second and nine from the falls. Back, number five, he's got a little room. He weaves his way up for a first down. From the 43. Oh, it's a good fake. He's got space on the outside. He's up for about eight. Well, that was a really nifty play and Whitefish bit on that halfback. And he'll get a couple. Ooh, you better protect that ball. That was uh, unsportsmanlike on Whitefish that marched him forward. There we had an encroachment penalty that knocked the center right on his can. Big Swiker, a Montana Grizz commit. Nice little hitch route to number 14 on the edge. He's got space. Looks like another first down. They are up to about the 22 yard line. Up the middle, he's got space. A couple of the whitefish defenders almost gave each other a little headache. Second and eight for the Wildcats. Well executed. Number five. He looks loose. That'll be a Columbia Falls touchdown. With 7.03 remaining. That'll be 7-0. Wildcats on top. I have a son named Abe that began his running back career in little guy football right here in the Flathead Valley, averaging over 13 yards a carry. And I ended up taking him to Austin, Texas to play his high school career. 
and he became the captain of the number four ranked team in all of America, the 2015 Lake Travis Cavaliers. And Abe averaged over 12 yards of carry, even in Texas 6A. Some notable names played on that team like Garrett Wilson from the Jets and Baker Mayfield. And Abe ended up playing his college ball at Penn. That was a good kick right into the end zone and they'll start at their 20. A rumble for maybe one. First and 20. Gulick in the shotgun. He's back. He'll take it himself. A bit of a dangerous throw, but they were safe. Well, they have yet to make much forward progress, and they got about 20 to go here. There he goes. So we've got third and 10. Go look back, looking deep. Overthrows. I know Whitefish has a really good kicker. I don't know how about their punter. Not bad. Down to the, about the 39. Whitefish is ranked about 500. They're ranked number five. Thunder Falls is ranked four. Nice little hitch route to number 13. He stumbles over a guy and gets five. Got a white out in a slot facing me. About the same on the other side. It's a passing down, second and eight. Dumps it off to... He breaks it up. Oh, beautiful run. He's still on his feet, clear up to the 20. That beautiful rumble came all the way back. It's second and six. Got three wide outs on the left. Clock is kicking. Right up the middle, I think that's... Safe or is Safe still healthy? Third and six, and we got all the wideouts, all the slots, and even the running back is up on the passing line. Drills it up to number four for the first down. That was a next level throw by Schweiker. A fake run, gets it out to number five. He's got a good, strong arm. 22, Carson took him down for a minimal game. It'll be second and about six or seven. Schweiker will keep it himself and barrel up for about a one or two yard game. We have 135 remaining in the quarter. It's a third and four. On about the 47. Well, let's keep it. You won't get it. This is an interesting penalty because they were definitely in a spot where they would have gone for it. Now it's about fourth and nine. We'll see what they do. Looks like they're keeping the offense on the field. Rolling to the right, extending the play. He's got his man. Schweiker's definitely been on his game tonight. Little end around to Robinson. Mark. Gets about six. Montana has been setting near record low temperatures this October. A beautiful hitch to Robinson. He's got all kinds of space. Gets a first down. Schweiker back in the shotgun. Fake handoff. Pumps it out to number five again. He's a nifty little white out. Parker will keep it himself right up the middle. He's got space. He's off to the right. Touchdown, Cody Schweiker and the Wildcats. <clears throat> There's our score, 13 to zero with 10.35 remaining in the half. And the left-footed kicker gets it through. He could have made a 45-yard field goal with that group. Columbia Falls has been able to move the ball steadily. 
convert even fourth downs. And their big quarterback has been kind of overpowering the Whitefish D. So far, the Bulldogs have not really found the answer to positive yardage, but well, they've got a good quarterback. I like that play. They, uh, it was a kind of inside loop. I don't know if you saw it, but it was almost like a, a screen that you would use in a basketball game, two receivers. Hey, he got a good gain. That'll bring up third and about two and a half. He'll think he's got all kinds of room. He'll get a first down. First, first and ten from near midfield. Gulick handles a low snap. Broken up. Second and ten. Gulick himself is a good runner. He's back. He guns it right up the middle and he drops it like it was a greased pig. I don't think this is the third down that they were hoping for. Ten yards to go. Looks like they're pretty pretty good at picking up five. It was caught, but jarred loose by the defender. That was Schweiker himself, the quarterback, breaking up that play. And a beautiful spiraling high kick and a good bounce for Whitefish. He picks it up and gets a couple. With 8.13 to go in the half and a 14-point lead, a good burst through the middle. And a run by number 13, Alan Anderson. Now, what happened to Sapa? I haven't heard his name. Did he get hurt? The last game I filmed, you can see, and you'll see it's Dillon and Columbia Falls. And Sapo was definitely the go-to guy. But I'm not hearing his name called. That running back's a difficult position, and maybe he succumbed to an injury. I don't know, but I do know that I played with his father on a softball team for three years. Schweiker, he's just a big package at this level. Oh, hit immediately. Nothing there. That'll bring up third and about 13. Third and 13 from the 29. He's got two wide outs on each set. Striker back, looking right, gunning it. Broken up. Oh, a crazy bouncing. Oh, he did a great job fielding that and getting it off. Good bounce for Columbia Falls. Cleared down to the 24. There's a really good crowd for Whitefish represented here. Look at all these people. This is the most I've ever seen at a, a visiting game here. And I think there's as many Bulldog fans as there is Wildcat fans. Of course, it's only 10 miles away. Why shouldn't there be? Go it. Hand off to number four. He's dropped in the backfield. Number four, Hunt on the carry. Got three receivers to the right. He's looking left, though. Oh, no. Almost picked. Don't run out of bounds. Go it. Finally kind of throws it away. Fourth and 16, they will have to punt. I'd like to really hand it to that punter from Columbia Falls. That situation could have gone south in a real hurry. It was a bobbling snap, dribbling back to him. And yet he was able to field it and in a very poised fashion, get that punt off. Beautiful snap, high kick, not super far. Takes a little white fish bounce up to just past midfield to about the 46. I have a gut feeling he's gonna go for a deep ball at this time. He had a real good opportunity. Yep, what did I tell you? No, he uses the relief man. Number 13, I think it might be Anderson. 
little release valve play to Alan Anderson. That's smart. Just keep the running back in there in case everybody's covered. That'll be a, a long game. Porter catching a beautiful deep ball. Oh, that's a, the same formula he did last time he ran it into the end zone. He goes upfield up, about to where the nose guard is, cuts right, and uh, gets his way because he's so dang big. I'm not sure if I heard this right, but they were, when they were announcing, and I was just getting here, I thought they said he's 6'2", 235. That's a big package at this level. Yeah, he'll put his head down and get about four. Second and two, goal to go. Schweiker brings it in himself, just barrels in without much resistance. That kicker could make a 40-yard field goal. 21-0, 213 remaining. <clears throat> With 213 remaining in the half, we've got a 21-0 football game. That looks like it'll be a touchback. This is a really good kicker. I'd like to know what his long is on a field goal, but... I'm sure he could make a 45-yarder. I'm not sure that he would every time, but he has the range. The Bulldogs are successful when they can get five yards. When they can get a West Coast offense going, five yards, they they can do it because uh, Goet can get five yards almost every time himself if he does a good fake and keeps it. But when they get into a... Third and ten. What? I thought they, I thought they got that. I guess the ball was jiggling a little as it went down, and the ref called it incomplete. I thought that was a catch, shouldn't you? From my observation, they're a good offense when they can chip away and get five yards here and five yards there. There's a flag on the field. Beautiful open man. Up for about a 16-yard gain, but there is a flag. That is not what they needed, was it, folks? Oh, a good swift end around, but they're catching him. I believe that was number four, Hunt. Third at about 14, that was Chase Hill on that beautiful tackle. He really had a head of steam, but fires it in for the first down. I have been impressed with Gulick's ability to roll right and hit his receivers. and. They're getting open for him, too. If they could find the recipe here, they could stage a comeback. 121 remaining, score 21-0. I don't get that. It looked like to me like he spiked it, but why do that? The clock wasn't even running. I just don't get it. It's a great way to lose a down. Oh, he threads it right in there. To minute three remaining in the half, Whitefish is trying to convert and keep going here. That'll be bringing up fourth and three. If you track back with me a couple plays, it looked like a, a spike on first down. Now, why in the world waste a down? I could not understand that unless it was unintentional. And a funky little kick, snap right up. Woo, that was a that was a great hands guy getting a hold of that. Is that number five or yeah, number five, Mark Robinson. Karanowski is a good kicker, but it's really cold here tonight. And there could be some cold hands syndrome going on. 43 seconds. Cody's back. Rolling left this time and he'll get sacked. Big number. Seven, I believe. And 23 gave up on it. Schweiker in the count. 33 seconds to go. On a third at about 13. He's back. 
Good protection this time. Beautiful ball. Well, we've got a big fourth and 14, and they will do a quick kick and a good Columbia Falls bounce. Well, let's go see what they do with 20 seconds. I bet it's a kneel down. <laughs> Old night. And that's the end of the half. 21 0 Wildcats. <laughs> Only a tarts tonight. Anybody for some shave ice on this 15 degree night? My buddy Virgil, he was one of those guys that grew really quick. So by the time he was in eighth grade, he was the big star in Columbia Falls Wildcats. You can get his autograph, I know him. <laughs> well, I think I'll stand over here and film a little for the uh, second half so I can visit with my buddy. Commanding 21-0 lead. Wow, that's a good kicker. He's got a he's got a head of steam. Now, an interesting sidelight is Whitefish beat Columbia Falls in about the second game of the season. So some of the guys on this side are saying it's payback time. Well, let's see if it really is. This is kind of a fun view too, isn't it? Well, we'll see if they can get some. They made some halftime adjustments here, and there's a good first down. He'll keep it himself. He's got five. There's a flag. The backfield judge saw something, probably a hold. Well, I was right on the call. It was a holding. It backed him up. It spots second and 10. Oh, it's almost picked. It is picked. I believe that's their quarterback. He is 6'2", 235. Sports does he play, Virgil? Oh, that was a nice cut. First time we played White Fish. There's Chase coming down with that catch. He'll be so Our good running back, Reggie Hill, he broke his leg in the Whitefish game. No shirts tonight, folks. So the Cats' only two losses are against the Bulldogs. That's when Saper broke his leg. A good little hitch to number four on the side. The Cats move on from this game. They will play Billings Central, who is the number one seed in the East, undefeated. That's going to be quite a game. Gillick got a man open. He's got about 15, maybe 20. He'll take it himself. He's got a little space, gets about five. Whitefish is putting on a drive this time. Beautiful. Oh, tipped. It's been a heavily penalized outing for the Bulldogs, and now they're back at about another second and 20. Gillick to number 10 has been working out great. And yeah, number 10, Mason Kelts on the reception. It's quite a second effort by number 10, almost converts, and but it, that'll bring up about this. third and second. Well, it's 820 remaining in the third. One feels this is a pivotal moment in the game. Fourth and one. I don't know. I don't think he got it. Hey! Columbia Falls takes over.
Well, Anderson doesn't get much. The temperature here is 23 degrees, but with a 10 mile an hour wind, it seems colder than that. Schweiker has really been adept at converting these third of lawns. Oh, a nice little basketball pitch, and he's off to the races! Second and three, Schweiker in the shotgun. He's got his back spread out, he'll just take it himself. Wearing that clock down. Schweiker will take it himself. He gets about four Wildcats on the four. Schweiker looks like he'll take it himself. Touchdown Wildcats! Well folks, with 2.37 left in the third, I'm going to go post this game. 35-0 Wildcats. Hi friend. <laughs>